A blazing campfire invites gathering, contemplation, roasting marshmallows. People are drawn to campfires for more than warmth. Fire provides community, an event for sharing stories, conversation, and ceremony. Shared around our campfire is a story of our Missouri grandfather, who visited one summer with a cooler full of squirrels. For a Cub Scout campout, my grandpa's intention was to cook over a campfire a stew filled with squirrels. When it came time to eat, not one scout would take a bite. <laughs> There's a certain simplicity about cooking over fire. While a fresh trout can be packed in tin foil, then nestled in burning coals to roast, my grandpa's stew was cooked in a Dutch oven, the results of both immediate and delicious. Seemingly burned into my genes is a fascination with fire's unfettered approach to cooking. While at the Hopi reservation, I learned that Hopi women bake 32 loaves of bread at once in a simple clay oven. High in the Bolivian Andes, while working in a textile project, we were offered a sheep. The sheep was killed and butchered for the afternoon meal. Every last part of the sheep, except for the hide, was roasted in a scrappy clay oven. Today, chefs cook in indoor fireplaces within view of eaters. They prepare everything from steaks to puddings. One such restaurant is Camino in Oakland, California. No Dutch ovens here, just fresh ingredients and a chef's love of cooking by fire. I started having outdoor oven itch after reading Michael Pollan's New York Times article, where he and friends participated in a progressive meal completely cooked by one fire lasting 36 hours. I said, I can do this in my backyard, why not? In 2005, I participated with 11 other outdoor oven nerds, led by the late Alan Scott, to build this spectacular outdoor wood-fired brick oven in Virginia City. You see, my cooking fire it Cooking by fire itch goes back to that oven. In 2012, four, in December 2012, four of us gathered around our dining room table. A carpenter, a mason, a listener, and myself, all dreamers. We shared hot soup and my outdoor oven vision was put to paper. Naturally, basic and essential to all Montana outdoor oven building is that construction take place in snow and freezing temperatures. <laughs> Both ovens I have helped to build were constructed during winter, warmed only by the desire for fire. Since the oven's completion, its radiant heat has cooked heirloom beans of all kinds of meats, beets, squash, pizza for 40, pies, molten chocolate tarts, but no squirrel stew quite yet. People call our oven a pizza oven or a bread oven. I call it just the oven. Baking bread just felt too big, but it was inevitable. I decided to go for broke to build a French country loaf called a miche, meaning fat cheek not like the one on your face. A Montreal baker introduced the miche to Canada. Traditionally, French villagers shared an outdoor oven and families baked a miche on the same day, slashing the tops of their loaves in identifiable patterns. This five pound loaf is made with soft, moist dough ending up to be round, flat loaf with, a large interior, with large interior holes. So far, I have followed four recipes and made 10 loaves with tasty but imperfect results. <laughs> Entering the world of artisan bread baking, I immerse myself in auto lease, oven spring, pre-ferment, elasticity, crumb, folding, and metrics, 
only to find that what counts is using your five senses, taste, sound, smell, vision, and touch. Speaking of touchy, heat by fire is hard to control. For instance, 450 in our outdoor oven equates to 550 in our indoor oven. Easy to see the outcome of this discovery. Resting on our kitchen counter these days is a living sourdough beast known as a starter. It is fed twice daily and grows into a bubbling mess. My daily practice is to check it for liveliness. Miche dough is heavy and unmanageable. Working with this dough makes me jittery and uncertain. I pace the kitchen until the dough miraculously rises. Bread is 80% air, filled with spaces where flavor resides. Bread has been a fundamental necessity for over 6,000 years. My wood-fired oven beckons. Resident magpies seem to care the most about the life of my bread. <laughs> Simple food stories left untold, and we risk losing our way. Christopher Alexander says that architecture's purpose is to encourage and support life-giving activity, dreams, and playfulness. I now know that fired into my good-looking loaf of French miche is a playful transformation and a cheeky dream come true. <laughs>